Hey y'all, it's your girl Mish and welcome to a new year of the episode Love Mish Podcast where I share my thoughts, opinions, and ramblings and sometimes I'll have guests but no subject is off limits. It's a billion people in the world and I'm just one of them. So welcome to my world and let the conversation continue. Hey loves and happy new year. I hope you guys had a wonderful time ringing in year 2020 although this is not the actual new year we will celebrate a month you know the country that we live in I, I I'm starting to understand things a little bit better now although it's not the actual new year this country celebrates it around this time and it is okay to partake if one wishes in the background, we are listening to a YouTube channel that's called Native American Flute. Sleep meditation music, relaxing music for sleeping and soothing. It's a, And it's a beautiful picture. Not a picture, y'all. It's a video. It, I want to say Arizona. It's a mountain in the background. Blue sky. Um, you know, the mountain. It's a river, and you can see the water coming downstream. It's just so serenic. It's just beautiful. And to think, people get paid for, like, setting a camera up and <laughs> recording stuff like this to put on YouTube for people like me that need a scenery to go with their music. Okay, so I have just been so thrilled and over the moon about this particular episode. The more I learn, it just blows my mind away. Like a lot of cultures are related. And we just do not realize it. You guys, they say the same thing in different ways. So today I put up a picture of me, my mom, my two sisters. We were all standing in a row. And there is this app called PixArt. And I cannot draw for the life of me, but I love artwork. You see it all over my social media. So you can upload a picture. And with the app PixArt, you could turn it into any type of artistic drawing. I uploaded six of them. I put them on one picture as, you know, turned six pictures into one on a canvas. Those six different pictures are like perspectives. It's the same picture, me, my mom, my two sisters. But the app allowed me to choose six different ways of viewing that picture. And they were completely different, y'all. One picture was not like the same, you know, as another one. Um, For example, let's take a look at it. Um... One picture, I, I just, it looked like an oil painting. The next picture looks like rainbow, like the, like um, like a bag of Skittles. Another picture is black and white. Another picture is um, blurry, where you can almost can't make out, you know, the faces. And it's, it's almost like 3D, like another dimension-esque. And I really think that one is interesting. It always draws my attention. Um... The next one is like a little fuzzy, um, you know, the color is a little peach. And then the last one is like almost like a starry night. It's kind of dark. Um, our, our skin tone looks really chocolatey, but the blues really s- stick out in the picture. So I said that to say, I don't really judge religion anymore because at the end of the day, everybody in each religion knows that there's a creator. Um, They might have demigods and different deities and spirits and angels or saints. Um, I told y'all before, it's this really good website called um, God Checker. There's over 4,000 gods and I like the website because it divides the gods into cultures. So you can um, click on Native American and and they list animals. They're really big with nature. And you can click on Romans and Greek and Catholic. It's a lot of saints. I'm still in the A's. It's been slow at work, and so I started reading the saints one by one, and I'm still in the freaking A's, y'all. And it's like everyday people that may have done something heroic, so they got named a saint. Like, somebody could take that in the future and and start saying, 
um, that they were gods when that's not what they're intended to be. They were regular people who were just called saints. So sometimes when I look at demigods and different stuff like that, it's like, did we kind of twist history along the way? And that's not what they intended those to be. Because yes, there is God creator, you know, but if the angels were with humans, that's some type of um, superhuman, so to speak, you know, you're half God, you're half human, and they're going to be able to, to do different, um, you know, heroic feats. And of course, their names is going to be in different books and stuff. Are we calling them gods when they really aren't supposed to be? You get what I'm saying? Just think, because we weren't really back there, we could kind of twist a lot of things. And that's probably not how it's supposed to be. Um, so on my journey, I just decided to learn it all and keep what resonates with me and I think it's helping me more than it's hurting me and you're about to find out <clears throat> why I say that okay so I'm gonna do different categories um and I have all of my websites I gotta get rid of that I have all my websites, and I'm just so excited to share. Um, You always want to cross-check, double-check, verify. Don't take what resonates with you, and you know what I mean? Um, I don't think there's no wrong um, way to research or study. At the end of the day, just remember that you are in control of your life nobody can force you to think or believe anything you hold on to that power because at the end of the day god gave you free will he gave that to you it's the best gift in the whole wide world don't you dare give that away even listening to this podcast enjoy your free will okay so i'm gonna start with what we all know the ten commandments all right um and maybe let me not say that. It's what the well-known um, Ten Commandments from the Christian um, religion. So I, I'm going to read this because I thought this was interesting. The church doesn't... And um, I, I link the website, okay? So this is coming from dummies.com. And the category or the title of the webpage is Catholicism. Sorry, y'all. Something is itching me, and my skin is not happy about it. I wonder what's going on. Is it swelling up or something? Um, Catholicism and the Ten Commandments is the title. So there's a little reminder. The church doesn't see the Ten Commandments as arbitrary rules and regulations from the man upstairs, but as commandments for protection. Obey them and eternal happiness is yours. Disobey them and suffer the consequences. That really resonated with me because that's not how it's taught in the Christian culture. It's more of do this and go to heaven or don't do this and go to hell. In the Catholic Church, they said it's not rules or regulations, but it's just commandments for protection. So in other words, if you kill somebody, they're not deeming you to hell. They're just saying stuff for the consequences, whatever the consequences will be for that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go over the 10. Number one is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. This commandment forbids idolatry, the worship of false gods and goddesses, and it excludes polytheism, the belief in many gods insisting instead on monotheism the belief in one god this commandment forbids making golden calves building temples to isis and worshiping statues of seizure for example number two thou shalt not take the lord of thou shalt not take the name of the lord thy god in vain the faithful are required to honor the name of the god it makes sense that if you're that if you're to love god with all your heart soul mind and strength then you'll naturally to respect the name of God with equal passion and vigor. Number three, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. The Jewish celebration of Sabbath, Shabbat, begins at sundown on Friday evening and lasts until sundown on Saturday. Catholic 
Protestant and Orthodox Christians go to church on Sunday, treating it as the Lord's Day instead of Saturday to honor the Christ, to honor the day Christ rose from the dead. Four, honor thy father and mother. This commandment obliges the faithful to show respect for their parents as children and adults. Children must obey their parents and adults must respect and see to the care of their parents when they become old and infirm. Number five, thou shall not kill. The better translation from the Hebrew would be thou shall not murder. A subtle distinction, but an important one to the church. Killing an innocent person is considered murder. Killing an unjust aggressor to preserve your own life is still killing, but it isn't considered murder or immoral. Now, that's the first time I've heard that. I haven't heard anybody break that down in the church. Because to me, we done kill cows, chickens, turkey, you know what I mean? Killing left and right. Um, and that's just where I am on my whole spiritual journey. I'm going to read a couple other of these laws and it'll make sense. Um, because although these talk about what to do with human, a lot of the other languages talk about Mother Earth and animals. So I'm like, did we just omit those? Because America knew that turning that the beef and pork and chicken industry will make them make a million so they just took that out it's just all suspicious y'all like why would you create different beings and say it's okay um to kill the animals but don't kill each other do that make sense if i'm gonna make a law the law goes for everything don't kill i don't want you to kill nothing and that even means we cutting down trees um, I've even thought about plants are alive. Are we raping them prematurely by snatching the fruit off of the leaves when they drop, when they're ripe and ready? I mean, I think it's just so many different levels that you can see things and so many different perspectives and the higher I go, or who knows, might not even be a level thing. But the more I learn, the more I observe, I just start to see things from different points of view. So thou shall not kill may mean just a neighbor to you, but thou shall not kill to me it could even be cutting down the, you know, forest and, um, you know, getting the crops off of the plants before it's time and killing animals. You know what I mean? So, again, that's why I started with the perspective um, story at the beginning, because I honestly think that's what it boils down to each religion just has different perspectives and, and then each person has their own perspectives on top of that okay so number six thou shall not commit adultery the sixth and ninth commands honor human sexuality this commandment forbids the actual physical act of having a moral sexual activity specifically adultery which is sex with someone else's spouse or a spouse cheating on their partner this commandment also includes fornication, which is sex between unmarried people, prostitution, pornography, homosexual activity, masturbation, group sex, rape, incest, pedophilia, bestiality, and necrophilia. Now, that's my first time seeing somebody break it down like that because I've heard in the Catholic religion, there's a lot of pedophilia. So if this is coming from a Catholic point of view, Y'all just committing adultery left and right, huh? Or fornication, my bad. And the more I read this, a lot of people aren't following commandments. No matter what religion I try to put them in, it's like everybody's fucking up. We really have to do better. Like, you're going to meet your maker one day, and all these rules and regulations that were set in front of you, you just didn't give a damn about them. Like, what what do you think is going to happen? Is there going to be a good existence? I don't think so. There's consequences to everything. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not a game. It's very serious. And people should live their life more seriously. I'll just put it that way. And you are accountable for what you learn. So the more you learn, there's no excuse. The next one is thou shall not steal. The seventh and ten commandments focus on respecting and honoring the possessions of others. This commandment forbids the act of taking someone else's property. The Catholic Church believed that this commandment also denounces cheating people of their money or property, depriving workers of their just wage, or not giving employees a full day's work for a full day's pay. Embezzlement, fraud, tax evasion, and vandalism are all considered extensions of violations of the Seventh Commandment. Now, I don't think Uncle Sam cares about this. <laughs> I don't think employers care about this. 
A lot of people are underpaid. A lot of people that start their businesses from scratch are getting taxes out the ass. It's really sad. I remember looking at one account and the amount of money they made, they basically paid half in taxes. It was like, dang, Uncle Sam is getting off. Thou shall not bear false witnesses against thy neighbor. The Eighth Commandment condemns lying because God is regarded as the author of all truth. The church believes that humans are obligated to honor the truth. The most obvious way to fulfill this commandment is not to lie. Intentionally deceive another by speaking a falsehood. So a good Catholic is who you want to buy a used car from. I don't know. I don't put titles on anything. A, 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 good, a good Catholic to you could be the biggest fry. You never know. I don't know. Look at people's actions, not their titles. Number nine, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. The ninth commandment forbids the intentional desire and longing for moral sexuality. To sin in the heart, Jesus says, is to lust after a woman or a man in your heart with the desire and will to have immoral sex with them. Just as human life is a gift from God and needs to be respected, defended, and protected, so too is human sexuality. Catholicism regards human sexuality as a divine gift, so it's considered sacred in proper context, which is Mary. And number 10, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. The 10th commandment forbids the warning or taking someone else's property along with the 7th commandment. This commandment condemns thefts and the feelings of envy, greed, jealousy, and reaction to what other people have. We probably need to revisit this a lot because although we might not steal, it also says feelings of envy, greed, jealousy, and reaction to what other people have. So I guess I'm starting to see it now. A lot of the other religions actually name those things. They talk about envy. They talk about greed. They talk about jealousy. But I see here the Ten Commandments have grouped a lot of subjects. So I just pieced that together. Um... Like number six, thou shalt not commit adultery. They talked about pornography, prostitution. They they grouped it all in one category. Other religions will list them one by one. So I thought that was very interesting. I grew up with those, you know, in Bible in, in um summer Bible school, in Sunday school or summer Bible camp. You know, those are the things that we kind of go over. So pretty familiar with those. I also ran across the. 10 Indian Commandments. I don't have never heard of that before. And I remember I was just saying um, on the website, God Checker, you can click on different religions and go over the gods. So I was looking into the Indian gods and it was just, it was just interesting. Like I think there's a beaver and a turtle and they're just really in tune with nature. And I honestly don't think they're naming, oh, there's a rabbit god or a turtle god, but they're looking at the characteristics. A rabbit is swift and a turtle is slow. And I think they're giving these gods um, names of animals that they're similar to. So the 10 Indian commandments are, one, treat the earth and all that dwells therein with respect. I, don't, I think we should really, really, we don't do that. In California, it's fires left and right. Now, if it was a true fire, you know, Lord have mercy. Hope everybody's okay. But a lot of the times, people are being neglectful. You're smoking. You're not making sure your cigarette is out. You don't start a whole forest fire. Or these businesses, government, whoever it is, do you guys know when property is burnt, I think it becomes free or something like that, or the market value um, goes down and it's up for grabs. So when it's there, it could be like a wildlife reserve, you know, untouchable red line off limits. But if it's a fire, like the rules change. Now, I'm a business major. Business is dirty. All them case studies I did was when something went wrong and we're trying to fix it, clean, not even clean it up, but cover it up, make it better. Um, not even putting a Band-Aid on, over it. You know what I mean? So anything to do with business i was like dang business is a dirty dirty industry um so if we're supposed to be treating the earth and all that dwell upon it we're we're, we're messing up it's it's their earth first and then all that dwells on it so humans plants animals came second you know what i mean treat earth 
and all that dwell their own with respect. Nobody talks about that in any other culture. Number two, remain close to the great spirit. I think that's similar to, you know, number one, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of similar. Um, number three, show great respect for your fellow beings. If that was the case, there wouldn't have been slavery and the Holocaust wouldn't have existed and everything else in history that we read. So again, what are we doing? We're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is so sad. Um, number four, work together for the benefit of all humankind. Do you see how it's saying all one, not me, she, you, girl, women, uh, you know, African, Asian, Puerto Rican. It's, it's just listing like all and humankind and fellow beings and all that dwell on earth. Like it's like all is one. No division. Work together for the benefit of all humankind. Because we need each other. The bees need the ants, need the snakes, need the spiders. We need the trees, need the airs. The trees need us. Like, I heard if you take the ant out of the ecosystem, the whole thing would crash. Ants, bees, and I will go further and say if you take each thing out of the ecosystem, it will crash just differently. I really do. Take us out. It will be different. Because although we do do a lot of damage, I think we do help in a lot of ways. Like we can, the God, when God made us, he told us to tend the garden. So we're, we're supposed to be really good with helping nature and plants and stuff. I don't know why we slipped so far from that, but that was our duty. Tend to the garden. Name the animals, tend to the garden, care for your your, your, your wife. You know what I mean? Um, number five, give assistance and kindness wherever needed. I love that one. Give assistance and kindness wherever needed. Number six, do what you know to be right. Number seven, look after the well-being of mind and body. I love that. Yes, your mind and your body. Why that can't be in the Ten Commandments? If you don't take care of your mind, your body... It's going to go through hell. And if you don't take care of your body, it won't exist for much longer. So that is important. Look after the well-being of mind and body. Number eight. Dedicate a share of your efforts to the greater good. And I think that's the, that reminds me of 10% in the Bible. And that's only fair. And I decided that I'm going to give 10% of my earnings to my nonprofit, which is Auntie Boos. So I'm going to set up um, direct deposit to where 10% of my check goes to the nonprofit account. And we can use that when we feed the needy and do back to school drives and you know new baby care packages and um group outings for the kids and stuff so i'm excited to see that account build up and um let me tell you how that happened i was telling a guy on the phone at my job one of my customers that i used to donate um to world vision and i had my own child and i would send the money and they would send me pictures and different stuff like that um well he was like a lot of those companies are scams just like look at the ceos and stuff like you know, is that money really going to them or how much of that money is going to them? Because, you know, nonprofits still have a board. They still can give salary to each other. It's different, it's different ways of how that goes, I've learned, because I, you know, started one with my sisters. Um, and so he was like, if you see a hungry boy in your neighborhood, give him a sandwich. And I was like, oh, my God. My grandma always said growing up, like, 10% can be your time, you know, your honor, your love. It doesn't always have to be money. Because if that's the case, homeless people don't have money. You mean tell me they're going to hell because they didn't have 10% to give? They don't have any money to give? You know what I'm saying? So 10% have to be more than just monetary. So I'm just excited to see, um, you know, my money actually go to something that I care about. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, so to speak. Um... Number nine, be truthful and honest at all times. Self-explanatory. And um, the Ten Commandments is talking about sex and stealing and killing. But they didn't mention lying. They did not mention being 
being honest. So it's a lot of loopholes in there. You could follow all the Ten Commandments and lie your ass off. Like, that's why I just think more can't hurt to know, to know more commandments and to know more like what I'm doing. I don't think it hurts. It just helps you overall, you know, be a better individual overall. Um, so, yeah. And number 10, take full responsibility for your actions. I think that's, um, that is amazing. Like, when I started the Ten Commandments, from the Catholic point of view, they were saying they are not rules or laws. But, you know, you just have to accept the consequences of your actions. That kind of reminds me of this. Take full responsibility of your actions. Because if you don't, we all know there's consequences. So, if you are, when you're acting, if you're already taking full responsibility for your actions, they shouldn't have bad consequences. That's how I look at that. So I thought that was beautiful um, that I ran across that. So we went over the Catholic Ten Commandments and the Ten Indian Commandments. So now I'm going to go over the Seven Deadly Sins and the Seven Heavenly Virtues. So number... Okay, before I do the number, I wrote the seven things that are considered the worst things to do. So number one, greed, wanting too much of something. Number two, gluttony, similar to greed, but gluttony is the action of taking too much of something in. So I think greed is the actual want, but gluttony is when you actually have it. So greed could be I want, um, you know, what she has, but gluttony could be I already have that and I'm not satisfied with what I have. I'm steadily wanting more. Um, Lust. The need to fulfill inspirational desires, not just sexual desires. But this is usually what lust is associated with. Envy. Jealousy. Wanting to have what someone has. I think it's more of the emotion because we already said gluttony was taking too much of something in. So I guess envy could be that emotion that you exude for wanting what someone else has. And greed, I guess. So that's really bad. Greed, gluttony, and envy are kind of the same. Sloth, being too slow or lazy. Or being too slow or lazy. Hmm. I guess that's fair. Because even in the Bible, it says men that don't work don't eat. So that's your own personal consequence. But but I guess in this life, you just shouldn't be slothful. Maybe you should always. And then all things are emotion too energy-wise. So you don't want to be slow or lazy because you're out of sync with how energy works. Um, wrath. Vindictive, anger, angry, revenge. Number seven, pride, being too self-satisfied. So we have greed, gluttony, lust, envy, sloth, wrath, and pride. I think those are in the Bible as well. And then we have the seven heavenly virtues, humility, over pride, kindness, over envy, temperance, over gluttony, charity, over greed. Chastity over lust, diligence over sloth, and patience over wrath. So with me being a Libra, I seek to have balance in every single thing in my life. I just cannot help it. It irks my nerves. It irks my being. It gives me anxiety when things are not in balance. I don't like injustice. Even when it comes to men and women, I want them to be eat like every single thing. Race, I want to be... Like, I just want everybody to be on the same plan for everything to be even. And it's interesting because as I was reading um, with the Orishas, the African proverb about how Earth was created, apparently um, the Orishas came from heaven. So I don't know if they were God deities or whatever, but they weren't naturally here. They came here. And they were all the same. They had all the same magic powers or whatever. And they complained to God, make us different. Life is boring. We all have the same thing. So that's when... um, 
it was so funny because I think he asked like a bumblebee or he asked some animal with him being God or knowing he asked some animal what to do and the animal was like um because he was like if I give certain stuff certain things different powers they'll come back and complain and say you know you gave him this that other you know what I mean favoritism um so he, was, he couldn't think of a just way to do it so the bee you know iguana whatever it was like some little animal told him you know tell them when to meet you in the field and at that time you throw down the different gifts and what they get they get and they can't blame you because it's what they picked up so the erasures you know they were happy with that they they got their gifts but as you can imagine some were faster than others and this that other so some end up getting more gifts than the others so I, I still don't think it was fair but at least they couldn't blame him because they would have to blame them own selves for not being fast enough to get them it reminds me of um easter egg when we go easter egg hunting and we go pick up the eggs hello and who found the golden egg with the money in it so i don't know different things in my life i just start putting them together and the pictures are just amazing maybe it's just me so when i look at this the heavenly virtues and they're supposed to balance out the seven deadly sins it makes sense um if you're going to be lustful and you balance that with chastity, you're good. You can have a healthy balance. If you're kind, then there's no way you can be so, you know, envious of anything. Or if you have humility, how can you be so prideful? You know, and if you're patient, you won't get mad. And that's, that one sticks out for me because driving to work, good lord. I swear, everybody need to be frozen until I get to work, okay? <laughs> so I want to roll to myself. It always seemed like somebody ain't got nowhere to go or a mom van or like, what the fuck? People, we have places to go. <sighs> now, in Orlando, they do have a fast lane. I think that's nice because some people need to get where they're going. And if you don't need to get where you're going, get out the fucking way. That's just how I feel. Um, so I like how they balance that out. And that was the seven deadly sins and the seven heavenly virtues. Now, this one is going to be my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite, you guys. The 50 primary universal laws. Vibrations to maintain order. Now, I have the link. It's a YouTube link. It's free. You can listen to the guy tell you the name. He will also give you a definition of it. But because I have so much more to do, I'm not, I wrote it down for myself. I know them. I made my own personal. Um, I have a written journal. And I have a digital journal. Because I feel like if they shut the internet down one day, I still have my... They can't take what I already got. But I'm going to go over them. But it's just the name. So if you want a little more, you're going to have to... Um... Oh, I forgot to tag it. You're going to have to listen to the YouTube gonna have to listen to the YouTube I thought I had um hmm I thought I had uh tagged it already but I didn't okay oh I didn't I thought so let me erase this I did. I didn't think I did it. Nobody's really interested in it, but it's a lot to learn. Okay, so the first one is the law of harmony. So I'm going to just say the law of, because they all start with the law of, and then I'm just list the names. So the law of harmony, reincarnation and karma, wisdom, grace, 
Soul Evolution, Para Vista, Vibrational Attainment, Free Will, One, Manifestation, Conscious Detachment, Gratitude, Fellowship, Resistance, Attraction, Reflection, Unconditional Love, Magnetic Affinities, Abundance, Divine Order, Attitude, Threes, Association, Commitment, Dishonest, Experiments, I'm sorry I said that wrong, Experience, Fearful Confrontation, Group Consciousness, Personal Return, Activity, Denial, New Beginnings, Compensation, Psychometric Influence, Totality, Dominant Desire, Duality, Self-Destruction, Environmental Manifestation, Restriction, Self-Worth, Growth, Self-Truth, Summarized Experience, Belief, Dharmic Direction, Purifying Action, Karmic Excess, Release, Ritual, I said it, it was by Dick Sup, Suffin. I'm not sure about that. But yes, click on the YouTube. It's long, but it gives good details and descriptions. You can write them down for yourself. Once he gives you the example, you will understand fully what it means. And it will make so much sense to you. I, I shared with my sister them right away. I was so blown away by these. All right. Thanks a million for listening. You can reach me on all my other social media platforms by visiting my link tree, which is L-U-V dot M-E-E-S-H. I hope you have a better than great day. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.